Hey guys, it is July 26th. Tomorrow I get married in Hanville, Louisiana and the 7 inch Kara Kickstarter is half over. It has been a lot of things. It has been a whole heck of a week. So I want to talk about two things today. I want to talk about um, the Kickstarter and that kind of process first and then I want to talk about getting married during COVID second. So um, a lot of people have kind of been like, why are you doing a wedding and a Kickstarter at the same time? And honestly, it's because both of them have both been put off for so long. And I am genuinely concerned that if I continue to put either of them off, it's not going to happen. So volume two, in terms of making the comic and laying out the comic, it's finished. Um, all that really remains is to raise the other half of the funds. We're almost at the halfway mark, which is a little bit disappointing for me because you know we're halfway over and I was hoping we'd be halfway funded by now. Um, give me one sec. Bowie! You wanna be on camera? You wanna say hi? Can't deny my boy. Um, but I do know that a big chunk of, or at least I feel like a big chunk of why I'm not halfway there yet has to do with the second thing that we're going to talk about today. So um, I did prepare a lot of stuff in advance and I did have a lot of stuff planned that I legitimately thought I could handle here in Louisiana, but it again ties in with the second thing. So if you like the work I do here on this channel, if you enjoy the tutorials, if you enjoy the reviews, if you like my artwork, it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would go check out 7 Inch Kara on Kickstarter. I have all kinds of great rewards, including physical copies of Volume 1 and Volume 2, uh, physical art so you can own some of my watercolor originals. Some of them have never before been available in any other way. Um, you can also get commissions of yourself, a loved one, your OC, as a Lilliputian. And I don't really offer a lot of commissions, so this might be one of the last opportunities to get a commission of my art online. So if you like my art, that could be a great way to own some that's actually custom for you. And I've also got some great Kara and Naomi sketches as well. If you just like my art in general and you'd like to own some of my art or if you think 7-inch Kara is cute. So you guys can check that out at 7inchkara.com slash Kickstarter. If you are new to Kickstarter, and it kind, I kind of forget how many people aren't familiar with Kickstarter because I'm a comic artist and over on comics Twitter, so much of comics Twitter is about having a Kickstarter and promoting your Kickstarter. So a lot of people over on comics Twitter already kind of understand how a Kickstarter goes down and what it entails. So I sometimes forget that not everybody is as obsessed as I am with some of these things. So a Kickstarter is well first of all kickstarter is a website and it's used to crowdfund projects and it can be used to crowdfund any sort of mostly physical projects although sometimes people will use it to kickstart music or um to kickstart see they, they really try to avoid things like let's build a park that would be an indiegogo kind of project so it's sometimes difficult to explain the nuance between a kickstarter and and Indiegogo, but it's basically a deliverable. You are backing for a specific thing. And you guys have probably seen Kickstarter fail videos on YouTube. Those are typically tech related projects where the scope is way bigger than the creators can actually deliver, like those solar panels that were supposed to light up the road. Um, but comic Kickstarters are kind of a different animal because most of the time when a comic artist is having a Kickstarter is crowdfunding their comic project, it's to cover the cost of printing, to cover the cost of shipping. So it serves as like a pre-order system. So 7-inch Kara, it's basically like a limited time pre-order. And um, another thing about Kickstarter, unlike Indiegogo or Patreon or some of the other crowdfunding sites out there, is that Kickstarter is all or nothing. So I'm trying to raise 7500 which is a fair amount of money. And we've raised about 3200 which is also a fair chunk. If I don't reach the full 7500 I don't get any of it. None of it, not a dime. And this is, I think it's a good thing in a couple ways. So one, it theoretically ensures that the creator has done their research on what it would cost to actually fund the thing that they're making. So if they don't receive that amount of money, they're not obligated to deliver on less than what they need. So that's the problem with some Indiegogo projects where it's um, flexible funding so they get to keep whatever they raise is that 
They may not have raised sufficient funds to do the thing they wanted to do, but they're still obligated to deliver on it. So with Kickstarter, it's all or nothing. So if I don't raise those funds, the, like the full amount, I don't get any of it at all. Um, and that also protects you guys because it's going to minimize, and with Kickstarter in general, it would minimize backing a project and then never getting anything at all. And I know with some Kickstarters, that's definitely a thing where it takes them like 10 years to get the Kickstarter out. With a comic Kickstarter, the time frame, it really is like pre-orders, the time frame is much shorter. So for volume two, we are going to send the book off to printing almost as soon as I get back from Louisiana. I have some eight, uh, four coma mini comics to draw and I need to do some um, copy editing and I need to do some color adjustment, but that's it. And then it can go off to the printer. So the time frame on a comics Kickstarter in terms of fulfillment is much shorter. So the goal is if we raise the money to get the books out by December, which would make it a really nice Christmas gift for somebody who might enjoy a charming tale of friendship and family. But um, so that kind of sets Kickstarter apart. And it also in terms of like comics, Twitter and indie comics, it Kickstarter is generally seen as the more trustworthy option and the safer option. I'm not trying to malign Indiegogo campaigns because there's a lot of reasons you might go with Indiegogo over Kickstarter. But that is why for comic projects, a lot of people prefer to go with Kickstarter over Indiegogo. So um, I've already kind of talked about this. I think I talked about it more in depth in the Kickstarter blog that I wrote or vlog that I wrote or recorded, I don't know where my head is, that I recorded right when the Kickstarter launched, but we've already done the research to determine how much we need to print the books and ship the books. So the 7,500 is inclusive of the printing and the shipping. And it's not just shipping it to you, it's shipping the books to me. So um, I do actually have a Patreon vlog where I talked about the books more in depth. Maybe I should do a shorter version of that for you guys at some point if there's interest. Um, I also have a My Life with ADHD, I have two My Life with ADHD videos where I talk about uh, running a Kickstarter as someone with ADHD because there is a lot of promotion involved. You're basically spending your whole time promoting. So um, it would mean a lot to me if you guys would check the pro project out. If you know anybody who might be interested in it, I'm always looking to spread the word and could really use your help with that. So if you have any parents who are looking for engaging books for their kids, if you know any nerds who'd like their kids reading comics or would like to introduce their kids to comics, um, if you know any teachers or librarians who are looking for new graphic novels to introduce to their younger students, please think of 7-Inch Kara when you're talking to them. And um, if you're completely, totally unfamiliar with 7-Inch Kara for whatever reason at all, you can read the first six chapters for free at 7inchkara.com. And that way you can see if you like it and you can decide whether it's a project you actually want to support. So the second topic for this vlog is getting married during COVID. And this is something I've actually been very quiet about because um, I realize it's it's a topic where there's a lot of elevated feelings, not just my own. So um, I'm talking about this regarding how I feel and I'm not making a judgment on anyone else. Um, this is how I feel and how our families have decided to operate. So Joseph and I have been together for about 11 years. And um, when we finally got the go-ahead to get married, it took a while, and it's not a topic I'm really comfortable talking about too much publicly, but it took a while to get uh, my parents' blessing on it or their consent on it. And I was an adult. I could have gone and gotten married without it, but I lost my dad when I was 22, so I only have my mom left. And um, people who have lost a parent kind of understand how hard it is to alienate or lose the other parent and how detrimental that can be. So that wasn't something I was willing to do. So we're finally getting married this year and we had originally planned on getting married on July 27th, which is our 11th dating anniversary. Um, and then COVID, I mean, we'd been hearing about COVID because we watch NHK and they'd been talking about COVID a lot in China and in Japan and in South Korea. But for some reason, I guess I thought it was going to be like H1N1 or swine flu or phone going off in the background where it is definitely a serious problem that affects the lives of a lot of people. 
but it doesn't necessarily directly impact lives in the U.S. as much as it does in other countries. So um, it, de it was, um, sorry that the phone really kind of threw me off. Um, I, I should say I'm not recording in Nashville. I'm recording in Louisiana, so this is not my normal recording environment. And this might look familiar because I've done a lot of my life with ADHD videos in this room. Um, anyway, so that kind of like threw our plans off and we weren't sure when it, when like stuff started closing in February and March, we weren't sure if we'd even be able to get married or how large our wedding could be. And we had different wedding plans. Like, um, I wanted to be able to invite, I have a large family on my mom's side. I wanted to invite my mom's family. I wanted to invite a bunch of my friends. Joseph has a bunch of friends. He has family that he would have liked to invite. And there was a time where we thought there would only be 10 people allowed, including the officiant. So um, we are somewhere in between the two where we have about 30 people max. And understandably, a lot of people bailed because they were like, oh, no, I cannot do that. And I respect that. Um, I knew from the get go that there were going to be people who weren't comfortable going to a wedding in the middle of COVID. So um, the goal with this wedding is to be as safe and as responsible as possible. So that's why only 30 people are invited. We can really spread out in the church. I bought masks and hand sanitizers to give to everybody who goes. I'm gonna be wearing a mask. I'm gonna insist that the people who attend are wearing a mask because I have family members who are immunocompromised and who are older and who are at high risk and I myself have asthma. So I wanna make sure that if we're gonna do this at this time, we do it as safely as possible. So um, it's a, gonna be a fairly small wedding in a church and then afterwards we're going to go have dinner at Frenier's Landing rather than having a reception. Um, I do wanna have a reception at some point, but uh, kind of looking at COVID predictions is probably gonna be more like a housewarming party in a couple of years. So um, people keep asking me if I'm excited and I'm excited. I was really excited and I keep vacillating between being excited and then COVID stuff happening and excited and then overwhelmed. And then when you're, you know, a 34 year old adult who's working, you can't just shut down your whole life when you're getting married. Like you can't take a month off to get married. And that is no different for me, even if I'm self-employed, my life is still happening around it. So that's also why we're kind of concurrently having the Kickstarter and getting married. And we also want to move like before September, the lease is over in September. So we couldn't put all of these things off indefinitely. And we've already put off starting our life for a really long time. So that's kind of why everything just got jam packed at the end. So um, most of my wedding stuff was purchased online. I got my dress from Unique Vintage. It's the second dress I got from them. I had to return the first cause it just looked terrible on me. So that's a big, duh. so like when it comes to wedding dresses, women are often recommended to go a little bit bigger and then they can tailor it down to you. Except with COVID, none of the alterations places were open, none of the tailors were open and the ones who were open did not want to do bridal alterations. So I returned the first dress. I got a second dress that's much more simple but more flattering. And then I've kind of had to augment it with things from the internet as well. So like I have like a lace overlay that goes on it and I ordered my shoes from Poetic License and they're a little bit too big because you know, you for a while you couldn't go places to try things on. So it was just like you order it and you hope it fits. Um, my purse, cause I, I have a clutch so I can bring my phone and I can bring lipstick and well not lipstick cause I'm gonna be wearing masks but like lip balm and stuff. I have a clutch. So all of those came from online. And then um, we got to Louisiana on Thursday, July 17th. And then that Monday we went to the courthouse to get our wedding licenses and stuff. So some of the wedding preparation has been done here in Louisiana. And most of the stores that I would go to for things, like I needed to get ribbon. So I ended up hitting three different Joann's, several different Michaels, even Hobby Lobby, uh, because all of the nice fabric stores have closed in Louisiana, oh, not in Louisiana, but in the Met Metairie area, they're all closed. So um, I never really found what I wanted, but it's it'll be good enough, it'll be fine. So um, we've been spending a lot of, a lot more time than we planned running to six different stores just to find one thing. 
So um, that has definitely eaten up a lot of our time budget. My time budget, it's eaten up a lot of my spoons because, you know, by the time I'm done driving around Metairie for six hours trying to find just ribbon, um, I'm exhausted and I'm brain dead and I can't come up with new way or I'm struggling to come up with new ways to engage people about 7-inch care and to get people to check out the Kickstarter and to get people to give it a shot. So, um, you know, life often doesn't go according to plan. And this is another one of those things that didn't go according to plan. And um, I really struggle with flexibility and I struggle with kind of double backing and coming up with new plans on the fly, especially if it's something that I'm very attached to. So it's been a lot of work and it's been kind of a struggle. And, and it, I don't know if it goes without saying, but I haven't been able to make any art while I've been here because I've either been driving, doing wedding stuff or doing Kickstarter stuff. So that definitely starts to take a toll on me because so much of my relaxation time and so much of my self-worth for better and for worse is tied in with the art that I make and the drawing that I do. Um, I haven't been able to do that as much either. So um, really just the point of this vlog was just to kind of check in with you guys, let you guys know I'm not dead, I'm okay, I'm healthy, I'm in good health. Um, I've been staying safe, wearing masks, constant hand sanitizer, and then constantly putting lotion on my hands and just generally trying to be as safe as possible um, and keep those around me safe. So um, that's why I'm kind of hesitant to even talk about this because I, I know there were certain risks we took in order to be here near our families when we got married. Since we drove eight hours from Nashville to Louisiana, we brought Bowie. The vet knew we were bringing Bowie. She prescribed an anti-anxiety medication for him. He's actually doing really, really well on it. He seems to really like it here. Um, we had both been self-quarantining before we drove down. And then we've had very limited contact with people outside of our immediate families, other than when you're out running errands and you're wearing masks and avoiding people anyway. So we've been trying to stay as safe as possible. And I'm absolutely not advocating um, going out and hitting a bunch of stores or crossing state lines or anything like that. Um, it's just kind of how this has panned out. So anyway, that's uh, kind of just two major life events going on at once. Since having your first comic Kickstarter for a lot of comic artists is a really big deal. It can open a lot of doors for you. It can help bring new fans to your work. It can help bring in job and illustration offers. So having a first Kickstarter is a big deal. And even though I've been involved in like 10 different comic anthology Kickstarters as a contributor and I've helped several friends with their Kickstarters, this is the first time it's my baby. So I've been like F5-ing and refreshing constantly. And I got to tell you guys, trying to do stuff on mobile while you're driving around in an area with limited cell service because AT&T sucks, um, it's not fun. Would not recommend. Somehow I thought I would, I would not be driving all over town looking for things like ribbon and favor bags, but yeah, there you are. And then also we have like a mail slowdown. Um... And I'm not going to go into that too, too much because there seems to be very divided feelings on it. I love UPS or USPS. I use USPS to ship all of my commissions. I use USPS to ship convention stuff when people order it from me online. I use it to ship books. I'm going to be using it to ship volume two. So I would like to see USPS continue to function as a national service. And I know how expensive it is shipping things, UPS and FedEx, it's at least twice as much, it's almost always more than twice as much. Um, so even though the mail is slow, I still believe in the United States Postal Service, um, but things arriving longer than the projected timeline when you have a wedding in a couple days does not help. Um, and I wanna show you guys, I wanna at least be able to post like a couple pictures from the wedding, because I've been very low key about the fact that we're getting married. It's not that I'm ashamed or anything like that, but due to COVID limiting how many people I could invite, I've been very quiet about it on social media because I didn't want to offend the people I couldn't invite. Um, because it wasn't about, although I am very happy that the, many of the people I love can be there, I got less than half the guest list because most of my family does not live in Louisiana. They live elsewhere. Um, and Joseph got most of the guest list because more of his family lives in the area. And then he has a brother with three kids. So that's five people right there. When you only have 30 people, that's a sixth of your guest list right there. So 
in terms of me and who I could invite, um, we agreed to give priority to people who lived in Louisiana and to give people priority who were immediate family. So, um, you know, there are a lot of people I couldn't invite who I really would have liked to have invited, but many of them would have had to travel and that is unfair to ask of them right now and not safe to ask them to fly. So that's why I didn't ask some of the people I would have liked to have invited to come. So that was a really difficult decision. It's one that I, I'm at peace with, but I'm not happy with, if you guys get what I'm saying. We're doing the best we can under the circumstances um, while also trying to keep as many people p safe as possible. Since they're coming for our wedding, I feel responsible for their health. Um, but I didn't talk about it on social media because I didn't know how to deal with like people I really care about being hurt that they weren't invited because it's like, it's COVID and I don't want you to get sick. So um, I've been very low key about it. And this is like the first time I think I'm really talking about it outside of a stream on YouTube. Um, I'm not ashamed of it or anything like that. It's just, I didn't want to stir up family and friend drama during a pandemic. Um, yeah, anyway, I think that is about it. Uh, I want to share photos from the wedding you know, only a few, a few tasteful ones. And I want to share pictures of my dress because I've worked really hard on it and it's not the dress of my dreams, but it is an internet dress and it sure is an internet dress and it is not from AliExpress. So it's not like, it's not bad. It's just not, I wanted to wear my grandmother's 70 year old wedding dress, but it's in, it needs to be restored. So that's kind of where it is right now. Actually, it's at Royal Cleaners. Um, and we don't even know if it can be uh, tailored at this point because the fabric is so old. But um, just been juggling a lot. Uh, the Kickstarter has been a lot. Um, preparing for the Kickstarter was a lot. And getting wet married was a lot. But um, I'm still, it's, it's gonna, it still feels kind of unreal. But every major thing feels kind of unreal until I'm like actually there. Like the last time I went to Japan in 2018, it didn't feel real until I was like landing in Osaka. So, so I don't know if that's my personality or if it's ADHD or what, but things tend to not feel real until I'm in the middle of them, which can be really bad if you are like me, because sometimes you won't take them seriously and you won't prepare for them and then you're underprepared. So I, that's why I kind of overprepare, even though they don't feel real, because it's hard for me to get a gauge. Anyway, uh, that's just kind of like a rambly, weird little vlog here in Southeast Louisiana. Tomorrow is my wedding day and the Kara Kickstarter is half over. So if you enjoy my art, if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy my streams, please check out the Kickstarter at 7inchcare.com slash Kickstarter. There'll be a link in the description below as well as in the cards and in the end cap. All right, Bowie is way over here being cute, but you guys can't see him. So I'll talk to you guys another time. Bye guys.